Welcome to MFQ Football. Tonight we're going to talk about the Buck Sweep RPO in nine man football. Let's take you into the first um, diagram here of the Buck Sweep RPO in nine man football. Uh, so, just for reference, I coached the uh, 12 year olds this year in Pee Wee football, and the Buck Sweep RPO was one of our best plays. We ran for 1,500 yards off of it and close to 20 touchdowns. Um, we run the RPO. Uh, the buck sweep RPO with our quarterback. So this is more of a quarterback buck sweep, but you could essentially, um, if you wanted to, I'll show you in a minute after I explain how we run the play, you could run it with the running back as, as the buck sweep uh, runner. And then the quarterback could read the backside end um, and have it as a, like a buck, a buck read sort of play. Okay. Um, so this is out of 11 P 11 P means one tight end and one back. Uh, the way we set it up is our H is basically an offset um, tight end off our line. Okay. Um, we're going to RPO the back side of the play. So obviously this play is going buck sweep to the right. The back side of the play would be the X. He'd be running a five step post. Uh, the quarterback's going to read if the middle of the field is open or closed. Um, if it's open, which means there's no defender in the middle of the field, as you can see, the free safeties kind of come over here, uh, over here onto this side, uh, for whatever reason, we are going, the quarterback has the full autonomy to snap the ball and throw that route if he likes it, okay? But he also has to understand that we aren't blocking this backside end. So if he he under, he has to understand he has to get that ball off quicker, he's going to get smacked in the teeth, okay? So quarterback has to understand middle of the field open. If the middle of the field's open, go ahead, hit this route if you want. Um, and remember, you've got pressure coming off the back with nobody blocking there because we're pulling that backside guard, Okay. So that's the first thing that we do. If the quarterback doesn't like it, he snaps the ball and he will follow a, a parade of blockers um, through the C gap to D gap, okay? So this is not an outside run. It becomes an outside run once the quarterback gets past the line of scrimmage and through the, what I call the tunnel of blockers. Then once he's through the tunnel of blockers, he has the he has the ability to kick it outside and go for a big run or kick it, cut it back inside and go for a big run. Okay. The running back is essentially going to be at what I call a cleanup blocker um, because you might not have a free safety or, or another defender over there. The running back basically becomes the, the player that takes up, that picks up the most dangerous man that's available coming at, at him. Okay. The H is going to kick out the end. Um, and the one thing we do allow our H to have autonomy that if the end is outside shade of him, he can move over a bit so that he can seal that end inside and kick him in. We on, on this buck sweep, we want to kick the end in. If you were playing 11 man football or 12 man football, um, you wouldn't have the H kicking the end. You'd have a, a you'd have the play side guard kicking that end. Uh, but since it's nine man football, we got creative and we have the H making sure that we seal that guy inside so that we've got that that C gap wide open to run, run through. Okay. Um, the Y is going to motion on the quarterback's foot. He's going to come across and he's going to take the outside backer or the most dangerous man. Um, the Z is just going to block the corner in front of him on that side. Backside guard's going to come around and he's going to wrap off. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to wrap off the H's butt and he's going to come around and seal whatever's coming from the inside so usually the inside backer he wants to seal or the most dangerous man, whatever color he sees first. Um, and then we're going to work. Um, center is going to have an on to down. Uh, if there's something on him, he's going to block it. If there's anything down. So if there was, if this nose was shifted in the a gap here, then the center would block down to the end. Um, and that would be his block. But because, because, this is a three uh, three stack or three three defense. The nose is head up on the center, so the center is going to block on. Um, the play side guard is gap down backer, so his first read is his inside gap. If there's somebody in his inside gap, he blocks it. If there's nobody in his inside gap, then he's looking for a defensive player over the down player from him. So down from him would be the center. And there is a player over the center that's down. So he would help double team him. And my playmaker doesn't have the ability to get to that double to get to the second level block. So he would, these two guys would push that nose. And then one of the center, the uh, one of them would come off and pick up the backside linebacker on that. Okay. Um, so that's, that is the, 
buck sweep RPO uh, in 11P. Um, it allows us to um, really get a lot of blockers to the point of attack. If you're if you're looking at how we get the point of attack, we're building a wall. So these two guys are walling off here. This guy's walling off here. So that we're trying to push all these defenders, including this with with this wrap. All these guys here, we're trying to push them inside. And now I've got numbers out here. I've got three. I've got four on three um, with the ability with the with the with the quarterback being the fourth guy. Um, so if you got numbers out there, it should be good. And if you're really look, if you're really looking at how this is going, even if this guy doesn't wrap here and get this guy, and he sort of helps with him, that you've got a lot of players going to the point of attack. So really, if you really want to break it down and be um, uh, what's the proper word for that? Be smart. You could say this guy's at the point of attack. This guy's at the point of attack. This guy's at the point of attack. Um, this guy's coming to the point of attack. So that's four right there. Five, six, seven, eight. You're pretty much sending eight players to the point of attack to make that block and seal off all these guys coming from over there and then put it on a four on three play for you. Okay. I talked about if you want, if you want to run uh, this with the, with the running back, you could run this with the running back instead of having this guy block. That means what I would do with the quarterback is he would still have his pre-snap RPO read, but I would put the running back to the opposite side of the quarterback. So I'd have the T on this side. And what I would do is I would have the running back and the quarterback mesh, and I would read this backside end. If this backside end crashes down and chases the running back, then I would have the quarterback come out and run. And if, and if the um, backside end contains, then I would just have the quarterback hand off to the T and run the buck. So you could run the buck sweep any way you wanted to. Um, you could, you could also, if you really wanted to, you could run the buck sweep um, with your slot back. Basically you would have, you just have the T replace and block the outside backer. And then you could hand it off uh, kind of on like a jet sweep. The only thing I would say on the jet sweep is that that backside guard is probably not going to get around fast enough um, for the, before that, that jet player goes. Okay. That's just one way to run it. Um, we, we have a different way to run it. Um, we can, you can run it in tight trips. Basically uh, the only difference here is I've moved the Y over already. I would have called this um, when I called the play in. So the same rules quarterback's going to read this RPO. If the middle field's open, wants to hit it, hit it. Just have an understanding that this backside guy might be free depending on how they align the front. Um, and then the Y is already there. Same assignments. Everybody gets the same block. Okay. So that just basically trips tight. And the reason I call it trips tight is because I've got three receivers here. One, two, three, but this guy's tight um, in the tight end spot. So it's probably still, it's still 11 P, but it is trips to trips tight. Okay. Uh, and then you could also go and do it in a compressed bunch set. This was our favorite that we like to do. Um, this past year really gave us a lot of value because you're basically already setting up all these guys to the point of attack. Um, the, but there is a little bit of a change. What I do is I like to kick out the end with the Y now, uh, just kind of gives it a different flavor, kick him out. The H will take the, the middle linebacker. Then the Z's playing most dangerous man. Sometimes it's the corner. Sometimes it's a free safety. Sometimes it's a linebacker. Z takes most dangerous man. T comes up and cleans out whether he comes through here or comes outside quarterback follows. So that's, that's, that's three ways. Plus the way I showed you that you can uh, buck read the back end and also give it to the jet, the, the jet guy, if you really wanted to. Okay. Let me show you guys some clips. Now uh, three clips that we had this, that we, that we utilized this year. Um, so this here is in our, what we call our bills formation. Uh, and just, I know this on the, so basically what we have here is we've got, a wing. So we've got this guy set up in the tight end spot. And then we got the receiver from this side, basically one um, yard behind him, just kind of in a wing formation. Okay. Um, as you'll see here, quarterback buck sweep. There goes the motion guy. There goes the quarterback. The guard didn't pull fast enough. This was our first game of the year. So we did have a few things that were kind of uh, crinkled on it that weren't hundred percent. But if you kind of go through here, there goes the motion guy. The guard, the guards coming around. The guard doesn't quite get there before the quarterback gets around the corner. But as you can see, look at the convoy that's coming around. Quarterback gets outside. Quarterback gets a nice seven, eight yard gain on that play. 
really good play. Take it every time. Okay. Uh, here's an here's another clip. Um, now we're in the compressed bunch. As you can see, uh, we've got the, the 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 tight end there, and we've got our 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 half our slot back from the left side came over. Plus our receiver came in. Um, okay. And the one thing about compressed bunch is not many people know how to line up. Okay. So he so he gets there, and then the quarterback gets a nice big run on this play. Um, right, nice big play on there. Okay. So just a couple things here. Obviously, this is 12-year-old, so sometimes we don't get everything we wanted. Okay. So this number nine here is supposed to get the end. The end kind of comes in here, crashes down, right? So this guy's going to get the backer. This guy up here is going to get the backer. He's the most dangerous man. He's going to block him here. He should be crashing this guy inside, but unfortunately, just because of the way it worked out, this guy comes in. But this is an okay play too, because what you'll see is he kicks him out there and the quarterback follows. And there you go. You've got your 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 receiver blocking most dangerous man. You've got your 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 tight end that was the offset tight end before going up. Um we didn't get a good job here on the pole. Um we got our running back up there, and then our quarterback gets daylight, kicks it outside, and he is gone for a big game. Okay. So just it's not always going to be the one thing I always tell my coaches and my players is the way it's drawn up on paper is not always necessarily the way it's going to work in a game. Okay. Uh, we'll go to clip three now. Um, so here again, we're kind of in a compressed bunch. Okay. Again, compressed bunch. We have the backside guard pull around quarterbacks again. So now they've got the outside kind of covered and quarterback gets, gets a game, but not big enough, but our, our, here comes our play side guard. So I don't know uh, the slot back here kind of goes inside. I don't know why he should be kicking out that end. Um, not a big deal. We get the end anyways. Here comes our puller around. He's looking for somebody to hit. There comes our, there comes our, our uh, running back, our running back. He's going to get the most dangerous man right here. He's going up and blocking. So here we go. Here comes our running back. And our quarterback still gets about he sees so now he bounces in he sees the cutback lane inside he gets about ten yards on that play so that's really good really good plays guys uh, just ways you can mix it up on in a nine man game to run gap scheme RPOs uh, real quick and easy if you have any questions mfqfootball at gmail.com um, remember, please like this video, please share this video, please comment on this video, and please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate the support. We've got lots of big things coming over the course of 2023. Thank you, guys. I hope to see everybody again. I hope everybody is enjoying the content that we're putting out. Um, thank you.